All set up, babe. Got our spot. All set up. This is definitely the highest. Yeah, look at that. We've, um, I you Huge. Go stand next to it for a bit of reference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're chopped up, bro. After a productive afternoon setting up and saying g'day to our old mate Norbert the emu, we went on a hunt to find a car we could buy to get around for a few weeks while I tried and get some work done. What have we done? We are now the proud owners of a 1989 Ford Laser GL. We're gonna hire a car, but we decided to do something a bit different and buy this thing. So she's registered, she runs, she's still carbied, which is really cool. It's crazy what was once a little idea has very easily grown into a full plan. And extending our chassis is one of the first things we had to tick off the to-do list. This is Hugh from Limitless Chassis. So Hugh runs Limitless Chassis here on the Sunshine Coast. And I'm trusting Hugh to cut the car in half. He's done it a few times, he reckons. The reason for us doing it, guys, basically, is because we want to get our rear wheels directly in the center sort of of our load. It'll just increase the load carrying capacity of the car. It'll do it more comfortably. It'll be a lot safer and we'll have zero chance of the chassis bending. So if you guys in the full drive scene, you definitely would have seen a lot of photos of cars that are bananas. We don't want that happening, but that's the reason we're doing it. So I want to ask you what other reasons for people watching would be to cut a car in half and make it longer. Um, I suppose you guys are taking probably our preferred option. You're yeah. just trying to stay with a normal size tray, but yeah. get the wheels under the load, yeah. um, which is perfect because as you can see, the wheels are too far forward. Yeah. A lot of guys do it just because they want a bigger tray and they still end up with the big overhang at the rear. Yeah. So it's not ideal for them, but at the end of the day, you end up with a bigger tray, 2100 yeah. or a 2400 tray on a dual cab. So you can get a lot of space on them. We try and push them down the route that a chassis can handle it and it's just an extension that fits that size. Yeah, okay, it's a bigger tray sort of thing is the main reason. Big, bigger tray it. or safer you wanted safer yeah some guys go bigger tray it's still safer anyway um, and as you mentioned about the chassis braking if you extend your wheelbase even if you put a longer tray on because you're getting more weight further forward reduce that chance of snapping the chassis yeah okay um, that's definitely a good thing huh yeah, yeah definitely snap chassis. No, <laughs> no we get plenty of them in i know you've told me like so many times but how long are we <laughs> extending. extending it by yeah so 350 isn't it yeah 350 okay and how long is the tray that the tray is 1800 oh yeah cool 350 mil will get the wheels close to the center of the tray it won't have a tow bar hanging out the back and it gets the dimensions back to what mitsubishi recommend mitsubishi recommend 1200 sticks out behind the wheels and that's exactly what you're going to end up with 1200 sticking out behind the wheels yeah we could cool. and i suppose obviously a few more pros that come with doing a chassis extension there's loads probably your biggest one is your safety that you were talking about yeah. there's like the comfort of driving them you retain or you get your braking back obviously a lot of guys will put a bit heavy weight here or a spare spare wheels hanging off the back caravan hanging off the back it all unloads the front of the car yeah so you end up with wishy-washy steering average brakes if you move those rear wheels back you get them under the load pushes a lot more of the weight further forward again yeah um, and it rebalances that front axle so yeah, if you've okay. got the weight there your braking and your steering's all good yeah even if you really load the things up you get all that back so yeah that's awesome major push on the safety side of things Hugh was nice enough to let us come in and film this whole process <laughs> i suppose for you guys if you see the process of a, how a chassis gets extended, which I think is really, really cool. I'm sure a lot of you guys will think it's really cool too because it's it's but out there. Cutting a car in half and making it longer, it's Like, it's to wicked. be honest, yeah, you're super excited. I am pumped out. <laughs> yeah, I can't yeah. wait. You can tell. Cool, yeah, all right, thank cool. you. <laughs> no, that's all right. Hopefully we Sweet. don't get in your way. Yeah, I'm sure you won't. Beautiful. All right, all right, let's cut a car in half. Are you just getting rid of the electric? Yeah. How many zip ties do you reckon? Oh man. Too many zip ties. You can okay. count them because I don't cut the tags on them. They're everywhere. <laughs> How do you professionally do it then if you don't use zip ties? Zip ties. It is zip ties. Zip ties. Oh, zip ties. oh, oh see okay. A lot go back in. That thing has been on here for like two years. Yeah, two years. Holding my fuel cap. Is that how you bring down your spare wheel? Did you never use this first time you've seen it happen? Yeah. This is it. Whoa! That is cool. So here with our springs, because my springs are 400 kilo constant load springs, and the load's going to be like 
800 kilos on the back of this thing. Am yep. I going to have to put some new leafs in there or like add some extra leafs, more support, or what's the go there? Um, look, the best option is leave it till afterwards. Um, hard to get good workers. <laughs> I mean, I'm the only one that's working and you guys are bullshit. <laughs> Back to the springs. So, um, they're 400 kilo springs, constant load springs, but they're designed to have a tray that hangs out right out the back here. So obviously we're gonna move the wheelbase further back, which means you're gonna have less tray hanging out the back. So they might not be 400 kilo springs, then they might turn into 600 kilo constant load springs, yeah. just because the position and the weight's different. Yeah, so what I'd say is leave them till afterwards, um, and then we can sort of have a look at how it sits and how it rides, and yep. we can change them. You can add a leaf, take a leaf out, they're really easy to change. So okay. We'll just wait till we've got the load on it, yep. take it for a drive and say, no, it's horrible, or yep. yeah, it's perfect. Sweet as. <laughs> So the car's now welded to the jig um, and it's like a fundamental part of doing the extension. I had no idea until I watched it happen today. Well, I'll let Hugh tell you what it does because he built this thing himself, this whole jig. So. Um, so yeah, like I suppose there's a couple of us in the country that do it on a jig and a lot of guys who just cut cars on actual stands. I learned cutting cars on axle stands and it is hard work. Trying to keep it square, it moves, it shakes, and you don't feel very safe under there. So we built a big jig, weighs about seven, 800 kilos, this jig. It's fully adjustable, up and down, left and right, forwards and backwards. Um, but basically it holds the car dead square. Um, you can cut the car in the middle, cut it wherever you want, and you can slide the back half away and slide it back in. Generally, we'll slide the back all the way out, we'll clean it up, get all the paint off it, get it ready for re-welding, and we'll just slide it back in. And wherever you stop, it's back in alignment. Um, and then you can just make your extension, weld it off, and forget about it. Happy days. Bit of time today on getting everything square on the jig. Yeah. That took a while. Yeah, it took um, hours. Yeah, it did, but once it's on there, we can make our cut nice and clean in the morning, pull it apart, and it'll take five minutes. Sweet. All right, cool. See you guys tomorrow morning. Today is the day guys. The car is getting cut. Tony's got his work shirt on too. Apparently he's doing a little bit of painting today. It's pretty cool that we still get to be a part of the process even though it's being done professionally. And I also want to take a moment to appreciate another day in this little red car. It's pretty cool just being like able to cruise around in a super old car that still works. I love the big windows. It doesn't look as scary. It almost looks a little bit underwhelming cutting it when you look at the car like this. It's being like, so bare, like it's just chassis. It's, yeah, when it's yeah. just like that. Because when I was like, oh, we're gonna chop the car, when you have the canopy and tray and everything on your lap, like, whoa, that's gonna be insane. But really, cars are pretty simple. I didn't realize how. It's just. I say simple, I really have no two idea. Two bars, still. an engine, four seats, a couple wheels, and you're off on your way. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Body mount. Body mount. Holds yeah. the cabin onto the chassis. Yeah. It actually is in two pieces. <laughs> That's cool. You painting? Yeah, back in my element. Back on the paint roller. It smells funky. It does. This is a primer coat. We're putting two coats of primer on this. And I think it's definitely worth mentioning that everything gets painted before and after being welded as well to prevent rust. All surfaces are sealed and coated in an effort to prevent any sort of corrosion at all. But insides, outside, every face is getting a coat of paint. So this is our chassis, the part that's going to extend it. And it's my job to paint it. I can feel useful. 
cool. So Hugh explained to me yesterday that these pieces that we're going to use to extend the chassis are the same thickness, the exact same size as our chassis, obviously, so it all blends in nicely. The uh, only difference is this stuff has a higher tensile strength, a higher braking strain than what the chassis material does. It will be braced and reinforced under there anyway. I'm excited to see it come together. I'm going to paint the entire chassis on this car, so we've, I've learned to prepare the whole lot. And the whole lot will get primed and then finish coated in a textured chassis paint. Oh man, it blends so nicely. Like you can't even tell that it's been paint. So Look cool. Look at this side over here. There you go, that's good. Look at that. Yeah, awesome. Our car's back in one piece. They just weld it to this bar so that they can move it back. Yeah, yeah, so the whole car yeah. gets welded to the jig and Just then it so gets it cut can. and the whole back side slides out and everything stays dead straight. That's cool, hey. How do you cut welds then? Grinder? Grinder. True. Yeah. Okay, clever. Yeah. Oh, mine were way better here. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Alright, so we're on the iPhone now because someone forgot the SD card. This is pretty well day three. And we've got the extra bits and pieces of the chassis extension. It's a hell of a lot of work. So we've got new mounts, new cab mounts. So obviously the original cab mounts move spots. Um, new tray mounts, because obviously the original front tray mounts have moved 350 mil in that direction. We've got Hugh under here sealing stuff up. That might cool in here as well. Cool, we've got a cross member put in and a new fuel tank mount as well. Um, the cross member is just for strength, eh Hugh, pretty much? Yeah, like a 350 mil doesn't really need one, but they got them pretty far apart on a Triton, so we'll chuck one in anyway. Legend man, thank you. And the bracing, so this is braced from here all the way down past the joint right to that front um, original cross member which is wicked and it's braced on the outside too i'll show you guys braced here under there across to there yeah i think that's about it really yeah. it's uh putting all the mounts in all the bracketry for everything the center bearing everything yeah. like that it takes more time than doing the extension itself yeah yeah it does <laughs> We're gonna actually cut the car off the jig and we can start painting. Oh, it's gone out. Oh no, he was on, he was on fire. There's the <laughs> hole to prove it. Yeah, it was a smoke coming off here. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sweet, so the chassis is now all painted. Um, it's painted in a truck chassis coating. It's a protective coating. It's a single pack epoxy for those of you guys that are interested in that sort of stuff. Uh, and before you get up me for not wearing a mask, the paint isn't atomized through that gun, so it's a splatter gun and it causes this texture that you guys can see. And there's no actual airborne particles that are floating around like with traditional spraying. I would recommend wearing a mask regardless, but I didn't have one and due to hygiene reasons, I'm not gonna wear the other guy's a mask, so a rag over the face is what I had. But it's come up really, really good. I'm stoked to have had that. I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to have been able to do the whole chassis. Just for a bit of peace of mind, knowing I'm going to be driving this thing up and down beaches. Um, I'm not going to always be able to wash it because water isn't always available. So being able to paint the chassis like this has been awesome. So this makes it day four of working on the car. To so just sit here now and dry and cure before we actually putting, start putting stuff back together. Groovy.
Kalio. There it is up there. What do you reckon? It looks good. The chassis looks good. The chassis looks good? Yeah. Mind the grinding in the back. It's definitely textured, hey. It's yeah, really yeah. Thick paint. Looks good. Look. It's longer. Yeah, it's longer. This is now day five for working on the car. It's all painted up. The guy's sealed in, so with one coat, needs one more coat of sealer on the inside. And then we're going to start putting the car back together again. So all the suspension components, the tank, um, the extended brake lines, all that sort of stuff is going to happen today. And I dare say a little bit of tomorrow as well. We've got a ball. Check out the new brake lines. The car's about to get some back wheels back on it. It makes my old exhaust look like a pea shooter. Get my back a bit. Exhaust, part of it. So the new exhaust we ordered doesn't quite fit and the guy's just doing some quick surgery <laughs> to hopefully fix it up and get it to fit a bit nicer. I hope you can hear me. Phew, there it is. Looks brand new. I think they just painted it. But tail shaft. Alright, see that on. What is it? See tail shaft? You good, Leo? Yeah. All right. Sean, you leaving me? Yeah. Leo's a bit um, restless to keep in a, in a shop while we try and work in film. Hey, Leo. And we forgot his shoes. And we forgot his shoes. <laughs> but yeah, this is day six. Should be the final day of assembly. I just picked up the tail shaft this morning. Sean's going to go for driving it, Leo to sleep, and I'm going to get stuck in and helping Hugh fit this tail shaft. Hopefully, we get our car back today. Do That'd you reckon it'll tomorrow? I don't know. We'll see how we go. It depends how useful I am in the shop, really. Alright, yeah, bye. bye Leo. Leo, bye. 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 Love you. Ah, uh, just a bit of box section over it. So it's a tail shaft's back in now. It fits and it went in smooth. A bit better than the exhaust yesterday, hey Hugh? Yeah, <laughs> went in a lot easier than the exhaust. Sick. Hugh's impressed me with the fact he talks everything to spec. The yep. first person I've ever seen that does this. <laughs> Lock tight and torque settings. My best friends. So it's ready to come down now, Hugh, is it? Yeah, mate. Sweet, man. So the car's pretty well all put back together, besides that little handbrake extension. It's ready to come down, and it's good for startup, hey? Yep. Ooh, exciting. Hugh's yeah. blessed me with the last job. Last job. The last job to do on the car before we can take her away. Don't mind you doing the actual last job in there. <laughs> Where did this wire go? Oh, is this the brake cable? Yeah, it was the brake cable. It was. Oh my god, that's filthy. No, that's no, so this sorry. is actually the cleanest part of the car. We found uh, some dirtier parts. I, I bet you did. Are you ready for this? <laughs> you guys remember the zip tie. How long did the other one last? Oh, like two years. Yeah. But we are upgrading this when we get our new tray. There we go. It's a little bit more movie than before, yeah. but hey, it's going to hold. That's right. It only needs to hold to till Tuesday. So we are upgrading our tray and we will have an actual for doing. Proper fuel filler mount. Fuel filler mount. You. The zip tie worked well though. Yes, it did. All right, let's get this drone up and show you guys, do the big reveal. Chassis extension done. So I know a big question you guys are going to have is cost. How much did this cost? How much did we pay for it? How much is it worth that you guys want to do it? So I had a chat to Hugh about it and they start at six and a half grand. They really do depend on what you want to do, how big your stretch is, the condition of the car, the amount of work you want to do before you bring it to him. 
Um, being totally transparent and honest with you guys, we didn't pay full price because of the photography filming and getting in there and doing as much as we could do as well. Kind of part of an agreement, a bit of an exchange that we had with Hugh, which has been fantastic and we really, really appreciated it. But yeah, that should basically cover it for you guys. About that six and a half grand mark is where it starts. If you have any questions, call Hugh from Limit the Chassis. That's what he does. <laughs> it's all you, babe. Car's all done, what do you reckon? Hugh, it looks legend. Good. Yeah, it looks, looks good. better than I what did you think it was going to look I like? Because I've seen a few of them done and it yeah. just looks really long. I yeah. don't feel like ours looks too long. And I reckon with the tray, the new tray and the new canopy, it'll look, yeah, good. It looks good. It looks, like looks good it, already. It looks good, yeah. <laughs> have you made a little mistake here, Hugh? Oh, what have I done now? Man, the tray is like 350 mil <laughs> away from the cab, man. We can, um, what we can do, easy fix, we'll just chop it in half, shorten it up, 350 <laughs> mil in the chassis, and the tray will fit again. How'd you be? Perfect. I also really appre appreciate your like your project management. I think we're working out last night. <laughs> was there like even five other five or six different companies company? involved in like yeah yeah parts there's and stuff. So you've done such a good job, like yeah. your workmanship, but your project management as well. Oh, it's thank you. Stuff. We try hard here. Yeah. <laughs> no, you've done it. Yeah, really good job. It looks so good, man. I want to be so stoked with it. I might I'll even offer the, the guy test. who painted it a uh, job here. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> I'll have to fly back from wherever I am. <laughs> Imagine they get a phone. Yeah, mate, I've got a chassis for you to paint. It's half a day's work. <laughs> fly in, fly out. Fly in, fly out, paint up. No, oh, that's wicked, man. Exhaust. I haven't seen you it. haven't even seen the exhaust. Yeah. yeah. It is exciting. Yeah, it's cool. It looks so much better. Oh yeah. But right. next step for us is now getting the tray and canopy put on, and that'll be getting mm. done next Monday and Tuesday. It's so, Friday. And it's Friday today, so we've got a. It is happening. Sorry. Man, you can't wipe the <laughs> smile off my face. I'm so happy with it. Yeah. Oh, I love exciting. it. Yeah. Cool. Groovy. Wow. We're wrapping up. Wrapping Thanks, up. Hugh. Oh, wait, I want to go grab a beer. Hold this. <laughs> it is Friday. So, Hugh, there it is, man. Thank Cheers, you mate. so much, dude. Yes. If you like the episode, guys, give it a thumbs up. If you like Hugh, also give Hugh a thumbs up. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, then, I guess, what else am I saying? How's it go? Oh, if you have any questions about it at all, comment. If I can't answer it, I'll message you and get him to answer it. Cheers, guys. Till next week.